what is important here you're going to see the anvil that's an original anvil they used there in Klingenthal and so you can see the, the shape of the anvil they um, forged either uh, welded or pattern welded blades or knives or daggers or whatever steel materials or carbon steel they forged them to shape so this is the anvil used there one of the anvils used there And this is uh, the process as you can pow power hammer. I mean, this is just a small uh, reproduction. Like, uh, so you can t take a look at it the way they uh, use it. So it's a power hammer, which is a hydraulic. You see that this is a, it's a water run. It used to be water run, so it's an imitation of the whole process. So you can take a look at that. See the whole description of uh, this hydraulic power or hammer power hammer which was run and done you see also the picture of uh, the one of the original ones look at the size of the hammer quite fascinating to look at it descriptions are in french all and this is the hammer you see that this is the hammer the original one right you can see that how or the way it looked like so this is quite fascinating look at the the size of the hammer and then how it was run right so this is what you can see uh, in this museum see more pictures of the whole process or of these um, old pictures of the uh, hammer or the power hammer look at the picture on the right side below look at how um, steel is being forged by that hammer and the smith is uh, pushing uh, back the steel bar so it is then hammered and forged into the desired shape and again another picture of uh, another hammer there so you can see many power hammers there so it's really quite fascinating for those of you or interesting, interested, sorry, in the forging process and making blades to come here and take a look at that. You have another picture of the, ha the hammering and also process hanging on the wall and then again of the power hammer we can take a look at it here you see um, on this sketch the shape of the blades that they forged on top you see the profile or symmetrical profile of blades used for straight swords a a glove as they call it or straight sabers so you see that the way they are they were made on top so they are the profile and if you go down they are asymmetrical profile of blades which were made again also for straight sabers but specifically for curved sabers and then also different types of scabbard shapes are depicted here or scabbard fittings scabbard mouth they made here Now I move on to the polishing process. 
different types of um, polishing stones were used and as you can see here on these pictures and posters not only the polishing stones which were used or polishing bands which were used and i will show it to you later but for sharpening and polishing right different methods were used you can see so it, based on the profile based to uh, excuse me on the way they wanted to have the profile of the blade so they placed uh, uh, the blade on the you know polishing stone or mill which was being also turned by hydraulic power so then that's the way they did it right so they also made uh, like uh, the fullers uh, to try to make dented areas in the blade as you can see all these things are uh, shown clearly here right uh, so then they could go and uh, do that or also specifically if you come and look at that's the way they are sharpening the bayonets right so they supported it as you can see it with a piece of wood so they it doesn't glide so they could keep it you know the piece of wood is holding the mid rib of the bayonet so they could keep it and then sharpen and polish the bayonet as you can see it here so this is really fascinating to see um, the whole uh, process here, which are uh, which the whole process is uh, very well described here in French for those of you who read French, right? Also, a bit of German is written there. The wichtigsten Arbeitstage beim Schleifen, as you can see, or uh, also a bit in English. Major steps were <laughs> models or pattern as actually 1728. So it's all explained here also in French detailed assemblage and so on and so on so here you see um, um, the way actually it was uh, uh, the polishing stones you can see them here right so you can take a look at all these uh, polishing stones here and uh, the way they were then uh, um, you know look at them how big these polishing stones were which is quite uh, an interesting thing to watch and to see. So you get an idea of uh, the size of these polishing stones and um, how the workers back then did it. That's a very good thing because this museum shows the whole process, forging process and polishing and sharpening process and uh, many other things. And that's what, in my opinion, makes this museum really fascinating. You can see it here again, different types of polishing stones down there. Uh, you can see that different types of stones, grits, and so on. You see the smaller ones as well. You see they're not only big stones for the main um, um, polish, or the general polish, polish to shape, but then the final polish and sharpening, you can also, uh, see those type of things here and again you see a polishing stone here Uh, step is for example some of the blades were blued so they used an acid I mean they heated the, uh, heated uh, the blade on the on fire uh, um, made by coal or charcoal and uh, charcoal and then they um, they heated it and then they applied a type of acid on it so then they could blue the blade as you can see it here and the whole process is explained again 
so you can see it here also this is what you see what they use for gilding the blade and also this one is the different colors and shades they wanted to blue or change the color of the blade everything is explained very well this process as well that's what makes it completely uh, interesting to visit this museum you see here for example again this is the bluing process this is a uh, pattern 8030 right and Garde Nationale, right, National Guard, pattern 1830, and there are different uh, types. Again, as I mentioned it to you, how to uh, blue the, and color uh, the blade. And this was, again, uh, the gilding process on an uh, officer saber of an officer or officer superior high-ranking officer superior of infantry pattern 8055 how it was gilded right look at the the guard sword guard which was gilded then and again um, a film a short video clip on the gilding process and also on the bluing process here for you And we go to the next process, which is uh, engraving and etching processes. So in this engraving and etch etching processes, you can see that uh, the tools they had, the designs they had, I mean, different designs which were then put on the blade and made drawings on the blade, and then they engraved it or put the design and they etched it on the blade. And I, in the uh, second video here, you can go and see it. I explained the famous engravers here, who they were. Here you see some of their tools here. They used, right? So you can take a look at, at what they used here, which is uh, quite interesting to, uh, to see that. And what they put on the blade, right? And it's always uh, fascinating uh, to watch that again. Please watch that video for uh, more information. Again, here you see a picture from another side of the um, on the table with different uh, designs, different engraving and etching tools, which you can find them here. And they used. here you see uh, again a short clip you look at the designs here uh, look at the designs here when I when you watch it here now and then you can go and see on the table here are exactly here are the designs you can go and see them these these are the designs I was talking about they put on the blade right You can see again uh, from another side all these engraving and etching tools they have it here 
I'm going to uh, show you picture and so you can take a look at that so these engraving tools you see here were given to the museum as a present by Charles Martin who was the grandson of the famed engraver Charles Wolfe. So in the second video I explained about Charles Wolfe. And look at the engraving tools here, all these files and piercing elements and engraving elements and tools. And down there you see for example some of the designs Mr. Wolfe put, used to put on the blades. Very intricate design as you can uh, take a look at that. So imagine now you go and engrave all these details on the blade to just see the mastery is uh, engravers back then those engravers in Klingenthal France had so again some other designs you see uh, uh, different types of engraving tools again files and many other things here as you can see Normally they put the blades on one of uh, these items so they are so they didn't move and then they could do their engravings and now we go to the next one and on the, um, the next uh, picture you can then take a look at again different um, designs right which were which are placed on some samples right and uh, blades so you can take a look at these samples that were these designs were made beautiful really good job Here's again a picture of Charles Wolfe, uh, the famous engraver from um, Klingenthal, France, and his work, some of his work here, original work presented here. The next uh, picture is quite interesting because you can have a comparison, right? Look at the, and then see the engravings we were talking about. Look at the blade on the left, which is blank po polished, and then on the right, which was applied by him. Look at the details of his work. And then again on the plate, on the right side, you can see other engravings there. And again, here in this picture, you can see some formulas there, what it was used and also uh, the materials used and going to see uh, another process is about making sword guards so it was another uh, division and the, I mean the, we had the division of labor here and look at this there are different guards uh, of swords which were made here hammered and uh, forged or uh, case hardened into shape depending on the materials they used so you can take a look at them right so again, quite fascinating to watch all these things and to see all these processes. You hardly see this in other museums, military museums. You just see swords, armor, uh, no explanation or of these processes. This is what makes this museum unique in my opinion.
really nice. And also the measurements, how they wanted to measure the guard and everything, the measuring tools, I mean, you can see they hold them here. And you see also some beautiful uh, um, sword guards which were not mounted, so they made many of them here. You see that there is one made of wood as a sample, then they used it to make the other ones right as a sample and there are many made of copper alloys brass bronze and also some of them of steel and iron so then the whole uh, process is uh, very well explained here you see here for example there are uh, pommels here sword pommels making of sword pommels and also scabbard mouth and um, different things here as you can see it here all these things you can see here and the handle even and the wire wrapping for the handle look at this wire wrapping you can see even see that there right it's really fascinating again sword guards you know the, as i said some of them made of iron steel some of them made of copper alloy brass different types of copper alloy brass brass bronze uh, and other types so you can see all of them here and what you know this is the process of wire wrapping how it was done you see that it's in put in a vice and then everything original things are put place here for you to watch and see and feel what they did and some examples of swords which were mounted here also put here so you can see how they made it and what they used Here you see again some other sword guards and the materials here. Look at this uh, ham different types for piercing tools and for shaping and you can see all of them here sword handles the guards shapes many other things as you can see here they used to make in Klingenthal France And here you see uh, making scabbards, and this was also another process. Okay, here you see that most of them are metal scabbards, but some of them are also wooden scabbards covered by leather. So you see how they put it in a vise and shaped it, heated it and then shaped it. So you see that uh, the whole process of uh, making scabbards, you can uh, see them as well. The wood for the scabbard, how it was carved and how it was made. You get the different saws. So for those wooden scabbards here as well, here on the left, on the right, the wooden scabbards on the left, you see the metal scabbards. So you see then uh, the whole uh, process here in uh, described and shown in uh, Klingenthal in France. So this is again, as I said to you, very, very beautiful. So, you see again a picture of this of metal scabbards here you see and then wooden scabbards right the way they were made some of them were uh, made of wood and then some of them were um, covered and you the wood it was used as a model a pattern for making then um, metal scabbards to, as measurement tool or as a measurement to me. So then you see that here, scabbard making was again, also a very complicated process and a work intensive one, labor intensive one, I mean.
So you see here then again mounted uh, sword sabers and swords here and again some other pictures so you can see how they worked with these materials so, and everything is uh, shown here in detail. And then the wood applied and many other things for you to see. In the following picture, for example, specifically. See uh, different parts of a sword here. So, and uh, they are uh, explained, uh, you know, in uh, French, calotte, which is uh, the pommel, as you see, then the handle, which is poignet, then sword guard, which is guard. And, uh, so, and then the um, scabbard mouth, which is covet, and then this is this uh, ring anneau, and many other things, fourreau, which is the scabbard, and uh, also these are these things which uh, you can all see, and all these parts are explained here. Well, I would like at the end, I mean, I'm going to have more videos on uh, Klingenthal, but um, please uh, subscribe to my channel and ask any questions you have and thank you for your attention and subscribe like make comments and see you soon